<laughs> More Jess, what are you doing? I told you I'm very slow moving. What this are you morning. doing? Me too. I spent all day trying to uh, detangle my twist. Oh, it how long did that take? Fucking forever. How many hours are we talking? <laughs> A few, like at least four. Damn. I know. It's just, it's like really tangled. And when I'm in fight camp, I don't have time to like do it all in one sitting. Mm -hmm. So it gets more tangled. <laughs> I had a the longer in it's my out this morning and I just ripped it out. Hey, there you like, go. I got plenty to spare. Yeah, that's the beauty <laughs> of being a white girl. <laughs> so much hair to go around. <laughs> I have to <laughs> cherish every strand I have <laughs> because it's not coming back for a long time when it comes out of my head. <laughs> and we're back. What's up, everyone? Hey, guys. It's us, Two Straws, or should I say Four Thighs. <laughs> it's what keeps bringing them back you know? yeah don't listen to what we're saying just look at the legs yes look at them go and press that join button yeah there you go and press the join button jess how crazy was ufc perth holy shit ufc 305 oh man what a roller coaster of emotions I cannot believe what happened. I can. I mean, you called it with the lean back thing. Um, I was worried about Duplessis wrestling at Asanya, and he was able to do both of those things and really just win a fight that he was, it looked like he was almost out of there. Like for a second and the third, or was it a fourth and the fourth? It looked like he was almost out of there and he just like did all the things that we were worried about for Adesanya. Yeah, it was, um, I, I've got to say, I kind of, I became a fan and, oh. a, and appreciated Dreykus in this fight. Oh, wow. Um, the, the way he fought and um, his, his post fight, um, kind of like mending that he did, I really appreciated. I thought it was, um, I, I guess, necessary to it kind was. of just, <laughs> to kind of seal it. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you got some apologizing to do, buddy. Um, but I I was just really impressed. Um, I've always kind of looked at him and been like, I, I don't understand how he keeps winning mm. because his, his rhythm, um, his just everything, it's just not pretty. Mm -hmm. But I think we're seeing more and more that in MMA, it doesn't have to be pretty. It can be, it can be a bit chaotic. It can be a bit brutish. It can be, um, you know, whatever it, it gets to look like. There's no, there's no rule to it anymore mm -hmm. um, is what I'm seeing in the sports evolution. And he was giving Izzy a hard time. I mean, he's given everybody repeatedly a hard time. Okay, it's, okay. it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can crisscross the other a way. It's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of foot fondly <laughs> <laughs> but his his forward pressure his power um just the way he puts everything together works so well for him mm -hmm. and yeah we saw in the third round is he kind of stepping forward and thinking that maybe the tides were going to turn but in in the fourth you know he got the finish and he did it in a way that um that it was just building upon the whole fight yeah, I, I think um, he had, like, a really strong second round. And that was when I was first thinking, oh, man, I don't know if Adesanya is prepared for this type of attack. But then in the third and the fourth, he looked a bit gas. It looked like he didn't have the energy to keep going with that wrestling strong game plan that he had. And his wrestling, like, it's not just a striking. It's tackle. That looks Ugly. Yeah, his wrestling is so ugly. And if anything, uh, we learned a lot about Adesanya's uh, wrestling defense, too. There's a lot to be look, worked on. There's a lot of um, small errors that he was making in that round that led to Duplessis getting to that position in the fourth. And when he hit him with that kind of step through overhand that he kept landing, it, I feel like it was hurting Adesanya even in the rounds that he was winning. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of moments where um, Adesanya uh, kind of got hit. It kept getting the top of the head. Like, it never really got to chin. But that top of the head is its own knockout button. We just usually see it with head kicks. But 
Duplessis is a big, solid piece of meat. Like, he is just hulking when he's in there. And even though Adesanya is super tall, super lanky, when you're able to reach a tall guy like that and hit him somewhere where he's not really blocking, and that was the top of the head for Adesanya, it took maybe three or four to start seeing him get wobbled. Like, there were a couple of times where because of where it landed, you didn't think that he was getting dropped, but he would fall over. He would lose his balance. You knew that something was happening to his equilibrium because of that big loop and punch that would land on the top of his head. And then in the fourth, it finally hit him square. You know, it finally hit him square. It was just a little too much, made him turn around, made him uh, kind of second guess. It looked like he second guessed where the hands were going to be because mm-hmm. at first we were just like, put your hands up. <laughs> 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 but uh, but it looked like he thought Duplessis was going to get the body lock. He drops his hands and then gets punched in the face again. Mm-hmm. And that was like a really good job um, by Duplessis, just mixing up his, his wrestling attacks with his striking attacks and just really keeping Adesanya guessing when it came to the clinch and the wrestling. And, yeah, it was it was a really good dismantling of someone who needs that space, who needs to be uh, kind of perfect in his striking. Um, Duplessis just said, nah, I'm going to make it ugly. And we're seeing the era of ugly striking, like you said. Like, look at Bilal. We had Strickland before. Now we have uh, Drikas. So, you don't need to be a kung fu master. You don't need to be a K1 global like uh, champion in order to get these crazy knockouts, in order to be a successful striker in MMA. All you have to do is be able to put it all together. Um, what I'm seeing as what you were saying is uh, it's, it's commitment. Mm-hmm. It's commitment. It's self-belief. Yeah. And it's, it's just being so uh, pressure forward and committed to the game plan and the intent behind all of your of your strikes, all of your takedown attempts, mm. that's what's winning these fights. And um, yeah, I I was um, watching this fight, and I just had to sit back and like really appreciate his body of work that he was doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, commitment is a good word for it because he committed to that ankle. I was like, <laughs> how did you let that? Happen? How did that it's work? It's unexpected. How did that work? It worked. And then it's it unexpected. And then uh, Adesanya was having trouble committing to a lot of things. Like um, the the body work really started working for him. The the um, punches to the gut, the stab kicks to the belly. Like those were the things that were getting the most reaction. Um, not the punches to the head, but everything that he was landing to the guts and then you would see him faint the knee you would see him like think about throwing things and not throw it and he was in a perfect position to throw it like when Drakus would kind of shell up like that he would be in that perfect position but I think because of you know just the punches that he had already eaten feeling his power knowing that he's tough he didn't want to take the risk of opening up to throw something big and meanwhile Drakus is opening up Anytime he wants, like just blah, you know, mm-hmm. don't mm-hmm. kick, blah. <laughs> and it works. It really works if you just believe in your own uh, abilities, believe in your own power and your style, and no one can tell you otherwise. Mm-hmm. What did you think about <clears throat> the post fight presser when they're talking about uh, Fahara stepping in and? and chiming in about wanting to go back down. Ah. And Jake is saying, like, no, 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 you take care of what you're doing. <coughs> Excuse me, up at heavyweight. Oh, uh-oh, <coughs> uh-oh. See, that's why I didn't want to eat my sandwich. <laughs> <coughs> oh, I don't know what happened. Uh, spit. It's still happening. Delicious spit. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, um, I didn't uh, I didn't see that part, actually. <coughs> the So Perea was like, hey, I want to have fun. I'm bored with my Khalil Roundtree matchup, and you guys look like you're having uh, all the fun down there. Let me jump in. Yeah, he said, let me take care of this. I'll come back down. And he said, no, no, no. You take care of what you're doing. After you're done, and after I'm done with Strickland, I'll come up to you because I don't want your cutting weight to be an excuse. 
So I'll I'll see you at light heavyweight. Of course he said no. <laughs> of course, uh, of course he said take your time, <laughs> Alex Perea. Well, he said he's coming up to him. It wasn't oh. a, it wasn't a dodge. Oh, it wasn't okay. saying like oh no no. It was saying like no. So you don't have any leg to stand on for me knocking you out for me you know out uh, outing you. I'll come up to you to light heavyweight. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I was actually like, okay. I mean, coming up is always kind of, a, I always feel like you're not taking as much of a risk when you come up because sure. you get to keep your belt. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's always the thing that I think about when, when someone wants to come up and, and you always have the excuse of being the small person. He has person. the excuse now. He has the excuse. <laughs> but I don't think he's going to be that small. He's a huge guy. He cuts a ton of weight. Yeah, but people will still say, Alex Padilla cut 22 pounds in a week and Drinka Suplessis walks around it that way. You know, like, they'll they'll, they'll still make that narrative. There will always be a spin. Yeah, so there's always going to be a built-in excuse for whoever does whatever, takes whatever risk. Um, but, yeah, that'd be fun. I'd, I'd watch I'm it. I'm here for yeah, it. I would watch I'd, it. I'd definitely watch it. Um yeah, I, I just wonder who's going to be next for Drickus. So they're Strickland. saying Strickland for sure. is next. Yes. For sure. Yes. Says who? Dana? Says, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I didn't watch any of the post-fight presses. But mm-hmm. but there's always there's always that possibility that Kamzat Whitaker winner could be so impressive that maybe he jumps the line. You never know with the UFC, but mm-hmm. as far as my understanding is at this point, Strickland has that spot next. Okay. I do feel horrible for... I can't. Like, <laughs> no space. I do feel horrible for, um, for like, Ankalev and all the guys at the top waiting... At 205? Yeah, waiting to fight Perea, and, like, Drickus is like, I'm next. <laughs> I don't I don't know that he'll be fast tracked unless they see it as a big money maker, which I see mm. that it possibly could be. Uh but I think people are already frustrated with the fact that Khalil Roundtree jumped the line a- ahead of, of everyone. But you have to you have to kind of think, you know, the performance of Jan and Anklev, it was just such a lackluster fight. I don't think they're excited to make that fight happen. Yeah. But it still has to. Does it? And for the sake of a legitimate sport. For that the sake. People but again, we're in, in the an entertainment rankings. sport. So this is where it gets a little tricky. And, um, you know, blocks can move in weird ways because yeah. we are in the entertainment business. Yeah. But, like, that was the one fight that was lackluster of his other... Others were a lot more. I know, right? It was, it was very get comfortable. comfortable up here. <laughs> the other fights were more impressive. It's just the one where the belt was on the line. It was just kind of a weird one. And mm-hmm. it felt like Uncle Ev won but against Jan, but like it ended up being a draw, and now he's never going to get that opportunity again. It, it's tragic if, that, if that's the case, but this is... I think what I've I've seen previously is that you don't have to be ranked in the top five. You don't have to necessarily be, um, you know, the number one contender to get a title shot. Yeah, I mean, that's what we're seeing now. <laughs> 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 now more than ever, I think there was definitely a time um, recently where it seemed like only the top five were getting shots, and now we're veering away from that. It's and, the needle movers. And it used to be that way just default, just like somebody comes into the UFC, gets a knockout, oh, why don't you fight Anderson Silva? You know, like that's what it used to be like. And then we went to this ranking system where people had to earn their way to the top. Um, you get a lot of t- the champ gets a lot of tape on whoever the top contenders are. And now we're kind of sliding back to you know before times. It's all Conor McGregor's doing. Oh, you think so? Yes. I mean, they gamed the ranking system for Conor McGregor yes. to work his way to the top. Exactly. Like I remember when uh, was it Dennis Siver? He was not ranked. 
And then right before they fought, he was like number 13. Like, yep. oh, he's number 13. Where'd you come from? How do we not realize this before Where you Where did you fought, come from, sir? Before you were matched to fight Conor McGregor. We didn't know that. That's a, Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Now we see your worth. And they, and they do it with certain people, I think, that, that test well within, like, popularity. Yeah, I'm just I'm just saying that uh, you know when it comes to people earning their spots, you still have to acknowledge that, and you still have to give give those people the uh, you still have to give them the opportunity. Like Magomed Ankalev, he's eight one and one, eighteen sorry, eighteen one and one. Like that's ridiculous that he hasn't gotten. And when was the his last fight? His last fight was uh, Johnny Walker at... Was that at the Apex? January. January 13th. Yeah. And he knocked fight him out. Night. Ye- ye- I can't see how he won. Hold on. <laughs> yes, he knocked him out with punches. That's exciting. Knocking out Johnny Walker as a grappler. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. exciting, man. Like, I don't know. I think uh, I think they see what a superstar uh, Alex Padilla is, and Magomed Ankalev is his biggest threat. For so sure. So they're going to go down the line, all the way down to number eight, Kilo Roundtree, and give him a chance. So, yeah, I'm just saying. I feel bad for him. Even Vulcan, Vulcan, uh, we were talking about him getting the shot next after his fight, and he also beat Johnny Walker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm noticing a pattern. <laughs> but uh, he's been ranked above Khalil for a while, too. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just uh, interesting that they went all the way down the line there. Did you see, like, uh, what the reasoning was for that? Did I they haven't just seen any it? reason. Huh. I have not seen any reason. I'm. It just kind of, in my mind, as as a fan and a fighter, it kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. So it was that's just. Wild. It was very. Um, I'm suspecting. I mm-hmm. would not. I would not have thought that that would be the match up to make. No. <laughs> but here we are. Here we are. Uh, yeah. I'm just looking at all the other guys. But good for Khalil because he's been on a tear. He's um. Five and zero oh in his last five fights, mm-hmm. so it's a big deal for him, but also earned. Um, when it comes to fan favorites, when it comes to exciting fights, the potential of this being like mm-hmm. a crazy matchup, and then if they are trying to do UFC South Africa, then the Duplessis versus Padilla one would line up perfectly. Would fit very nicely into that slot if he gets past Khalil. Which they're hoping. <laughs> I think that's what they're banking Which on. Which is the the whole plan, Because I he's an exciting fighter. He's heavy hitting. He is always coming in shape. Well, yes, he's always coming in shape. But um, he doesn't show gonna, the takedown Yeah, he's threat. not going to. He doesn't have the ground game that will put Perea on his back and mm-hmm. take him out of, you know, mm-hmm. potentially being strong in the fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's gonna fight in the place where we know we're gonna get a lot of a lot of people excited about it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So that's interesting. Anything else happened with the uh, with the uh, post fight on that fight on the main card? The Izzy, I saw a uh, little cute moments between them where, like, uh, he gave. Out of sign of the jacket, mm-hmm. and they seem very respectful. And then for a second, I thought Out of sign was gonna retire. Like he did the whole theatrics of taking his gloves off. He, uh, when they did the post fight speech in the octagon, he was like, "Well, you know, I'm 35." I felt like he didn't sell it the way that he was thinking he was. Yeah. But, but in my head, I'm like, oh, where's his gloves? Why aren't his gloves on? What is he doing? Oh, now he's talking about his age. Like, what is going on? And then he said, I'm not going anywhere. So I thought, it was rehearsed. I thought that was good. I mean, I don't know if he rehearsed losing. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know if he rehearsed that. But at least, you know, 
he had <laughs> a good improv <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with the whole acting of it. But um, yeah, I think I think that shows that he still loves the sport. I'm wondering how long he's gonna stick around now after losing the bell at, to Strickland after not being able to have a big comeback like he has done in the past. Like, it makes me wonder what the next steps are for Adesanya. Well, for me, I think Adesanya loves loves the drama, the build-up, the storyline. So I think this is a perfect opportunity for him to, you know, start building himself back up. And I think that it'll be interesting who they match him up with. I've, If I remember clearly, they were saying that he wants to get right back in there. It's just kind of who are they going to match him up with? Can you hear me too? Yes, I can. <laughs> I can hear everything you do with your mouth when you like scratch the roof of your mouth. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. It's so loud. Mm. <laughs> I haven't heard it in the um, in the podcast, but maybe I'm not listening for it. <laughs> now so you'll never to the noises. <laughs> 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 Fucking Adam gave me a sandwich right before, and you now I feel so it. guilty. Eating you and half. No, <laughs> I'm not hungry. <laughs> you sure? I'm sure. I'm sorry. <sighs> okay, um, let's move on because this fight is making me sad. Oh. <laughs> I love me some Adesanya. It's just like little, little things that I feel like weren't focused on as much. And maybe it was the surprise factor. But little things in the grappling part, man, I feel like weren't focused on as much. Like maybe he doesn't have people who can hold him down. Maybe people, maybe he's so used to the way that his training partners attack that he's found ways around them. But then when you get someone who is just kind of a wild card, like Duplessis, you don't know what's going on down there. You know, like yeah. how did you how did you get on my ankle? Why am I falling over? What you know, like little little moments there where it felt like you know, simple wrestling could have gotten him out of those tough spots, but maybe the pressure, maybe just the the weight of the moment, like things like that were stopping him from reacting right away. I thought, I mean, for somebody who I know as being such a dominant striker and who does have a big gap to fill in the grappling area, I thought he did well with getting back up. Mm. you know in those moments and some of those takedowns like they were kind of shocking to watch so (laughs) they're not those they're not those takedowns that you like train any training partner would would throw at you in certain ways Mm -hmm. now the the big blast doubles yeah he he wasn't able to get his hips back but I think that just goes to the the power and um the surprising timing of of dry kiss Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think it goes to that. But I didn't think Izzy did terrible in the grappling. I think in this fight, I saw I saw his progression. No, it, it ended up being his downfall, for sure. But I thought as I've seen him perform as, you know, um, defensive grappling in the past, I thought... I thought he did okay. Well, I just think about, like, his Gaston fight, his Brunson fight, like, fights where I'm like, oh, for sure this guy's going to be able to get him down. And he just was his anti-wrestling was so levels above. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to this fight, um, it just looked like maybe he didn't expect it. So maybe he wasn't as fresh as he was when training for someone like Derek Brunson, who Mm -hmm. he knew that was the game plan. Like maybe he just didn't think that Drikus would have the skills to get him down. And then in fact, he, didn't need him. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <You know? laughs> he just used his body. <laughs> he just threw his body at him and got him down. But uh yeah, it's just um I think I think there's uh, a lot to work with af- off of that and hopefully he'll be able to bounce back and have some things to keep him keep him interested in the game. Sure. Not, I mean uh, I think it float away from us. Yeah. I think it will all be an amazing story and journey to watch. Um the Co-main was pretty exciting, too. Ooh, Kaikara France after a 14-month layoff. You know, and then and then you have um, Ursig coming off of, you know, a title fight. Mm-hmm. I thought that this, you know, definitely has title implications 
in mind. So it's um it's really cool that Kaikara France wanted to get right back up in the mix, and it was um, really impressive initially how Ersig was controlling the distance, and he would step back, make Kaikara France mix. And then, you know, counter with a one, two. He he looked like in control of the range, but Kai Karafrantz just uh, ended up making that adjustment and following up with that big overhand and uh and putting her sig out. Yeah, he um he was doing like a nice little step through, kind of like what Duplessis was doing. And whenever you have um a taller, kind of lankier guy who can who tries to evade by moving backwards. That's kind of what uh, Ursig and Adesanya were doing, where they were moving backwards and trying to bring their head out of the way. But one thing you learn, like maybe more so in like Muay Thai or boxing, it, when you move backwards, eventually you're gonna hit the ropes and bounce back forward, and then you're gonna run out of space to get out of the way. Uh, same thing in MMA. If you move straight back. Eventually, if your opponent is aggressive enough and is going to, you know, keep coming forward with punches, eventually one's going to land. And that's what Kai Car France did uh, with Duplessis. It was like five punches. But Kai, <laughs> only, Kai only needed like two. You know? <laughs> he only needed two. And he was able to find that mark and hit Ersig. It was really nice to see. You saw him throw it a couple of times earlier in the round. Um, and then once he finally got his range, he was just able to smash a uh, poor Steve Ersig on the chin. And, you know, I, I we make a lot of fun of, you know, how bland he looks and how just kind of average Joe he looked. But he had so much emotion on his face after that knockout. Like, if, if there was a picture of dang it, in the dictionary, that would be Steve Erzik's face after that. Like, he was just like, you know, and I, it broke my heart. It really did. It broke my heart. And there was, there was a lot of respect between those guys the entire time. But, but especially afterwards, um, huge comeback from Kai Karafans. Um, It was a great fight. I thought so, too. I thought, you know, both men were respectful, which I, I like watching. I know people are really into the drama and the theatrics, but I, I really appreciate when people can be, you know, classy competitors. Dude, how old is Kai Kara Franz? Kai Kara Franz. I think he's early 30s. Was Dude, he 31? He, he looks like a child to me. <laughs> he looks like a, a, a friggin' 12-year-old. And the funny thing, isn't he like a father of two now? <laughs> when, Especially after he gets his little haircut, he reminds me of um, the character in this, uh, this video game called Bully. And, uh, yeah, he just looks like, yeah, he looks like a bad little kid. He does. <laughs> right? He looks like the bully, the guy from Bully. It's, uh, yeah, every time I see Kai, I always think of that because he always has the bully haircut and he looks 12. <laughs> <laughs> but that kid can friggin' hit. And I actually picked him to win. That was my only pick, that one. <laughs> but I actually picked him to win, and that was probably the most risky pick of the night because of Ursic's rise and Kai coming off of a bunch of uh, big losses in the past, but against very tough opponents. I just felt like because of the way he's performed in the past, because of, you know, the amount of experience he's had already, he was going to be able to one up Ursic because the only person people who have beat Kai are former champions. Mm -hmm. So I was, Pretty, I felt pretty strongly about that, even though it wasn't really a, a popular pick and ended up being the right one. I mean, I think he's a fighter that I would I would definitely pick because he has that, that rare knockout power at flyweight. Yeah. And this big knockout has to put him right right up into that title contention it spot. To, so that's right? got to be the next fight for him I gotta in go my mind. To, right? I got to go back to my rankings list. Well, he was, I think he was number four. Even after all those months off, he was still ranked number four. Yeah. And he just fought the number one contender. Well, he was ranked number seven. Oh. For some reason, even though he just fought for the belt. But I guess the performance wasn't good enough that he could stay up there. 
<laughs> Which is wild because he almost won. Like that that's also the that's that's why rankings are stupid. <laughs> They're just for show. Rankings are freaking stupid, but uh let's see. Yeah, Kai Carfront is ranked four now and Ursig is ranked seven. Um so yeah, he has to be up there. <laughs> and then that. who's two and three? Two is uh Brandon Moreno. Well Roy Val is uh, fighting Tetsuda, Tetsudo Taira next. So Brandon Roy Val is number one. Brandon Moreno doesn't have an opponent. He's number two. And Amir Albazi doesn't have an opponent. He's number three. Mm. That'll be interesting. They could probably yeah. put Albazi and Kaikara France next if they're not trying to put somebody up for the title. Yeah. It just makes more sense in my mind because he just beat someone who, you know, narrowly lost the title well uh, kai just lost a split to fit split decision to um albazi mm. in june of 2023 so that was kai's last fight and also albazi's last fight they fucked each other up <laughs> they're like i need a break <laughs> Boy, <laughs> bro me too like, that was a lot <laughs> I'm gonna spend some time with my family after that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm wondering what's next for him. Does it have a listen? Yeah, he's not fighting anyone either. So I wonder what's next for that. Maybe maybe we get a rematch off of that for a fight for the contender. I don't know, but um I'd like to see them fight someone else. And he did he ever fight Brandon Roy Val? Feel like Kaikara France? Yeah. Yeah, he did. Back in 2020, he um, got submitted by Roy Val. Oh. Yeah, so, yeah, the, there's a log jam up at the top. That's why it's interesting that you have that uh, Tatsudo Taida guy coming in. Um, he's fighting Roy Val next. And I'm guessing the winner of that might get a crack at Pantoja. Probably more likely Tatsudo gets a crack at Pantoja because Roy Val's already fought him a few times. <laughs> I see what they're doing. So, yeah, they're building building this kid up for, uh, for a big fight night. Hey, if we get a Japanese champion, maybe we could get some UFC Japan going on. That'd be fun. I think there's such a huge market for it. It's weird that it doesn't happen. Right? You know what I mean? I feel like the Yakuza has like <laughs> they're more a hold interested on in it. <laughs> <laughs> they're like holding it for all of their promotions. They're like, no, we're the UFC out here, you know, with the with all the yeah, it's other stuff. One and and I don't know. What else is out there? One. In Risen. And Risen. One in Risen. Yeah. Maybe they're maybe they have a stronghold on it and don't want UFC traipsing on their territory. Maybe, but it just seems like it would be a nice fit. Right. Although maybe they're still they're still upset about what they did to, to Gomi and Genki Sudo mm. when they brought him over to the hey, 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 that's not yours. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, but this is my seat. He just wants a seat. I could probably <laughs> put the sandwich on his head and he wouldn't eat it. <laughs> Fine. Uh, let's go back to lean in this way. Uh, yeah. Um, what they did to them? They just gave them the toughest fights and. Yeah, they brought them in. They didn't just... really make them look good. Yeah. Yeah, but this kid is is nasty. His last fight, the one against Alex Perez, Perez remember he said ancient Japanese secret yes. when he blew his knee out from yes. that. When I've he been, wrote him like a stripper on a pole. Yeah, I've been trying to figure that out. Like, I haven't been trying to blow up my training partner's knees, but every time I get up there on somebody, <laughs> climb up on him with that uh, back I, control, I'm like, hmm. I want to believe that he was talking <laughs> about the... The leverage and motion that he was talking about, not about blowing out his okay. training partner's knees. So he was just talking about getting him back to the floor. Yeah, because he created such torque and momentum. You know, that it blew his knee. That up. it blew his knee out. Do you, Do you know what the recovery is like for Alex Perez? Has he talked about it yet? Um, I'm sure it's at least a year. Oh, I mean, I but the. Well, I wasn't sure if if they came out and said like MCL, ACL, anything like that. I'm not a doctor, but that looked like an it ACL. looked bad. That yeah, was right? bad. It could have oh. been it could have been a couple ligaments. Mm. Um, 
but normally on that kind of recovery, it's like post-surgery is like six months um, that you have to wait and you can do certain mobility stuff, but no weight bearing. And then mm. you start getting into like the rehab, the weight bearing, and then you have to make sure that you're not pushing it too, too tough. And you have to make sure that it takes, otherwise mm. it can pop. Yeah. Pop again. again. Yeah. Ugh. It's a tough one. Ugh. You know, you don't wish any injuries on the anyone. The sport, man, the sport is just breaking my heart. Ugh. I'm like extra emotional because week before my fight. So I'm just like, Ugh. <laughs> why would you do that to somebody? <laughs> why would you set up Genki Sudo for failure? <laughs> He's like one of the good ones. He's a great one. Uh, and he had a beautiful walkout when he was walking out to his first UFC fight. He was in a geisha costume. Yeah. And he had the fan and he was blowing the flowers. And uh, I was like, this is so wasted on people that are throwing their beer. They're like, bro, just bleed. Exactly. <laughs> Fuck, gotta go back to China. Yeah. <laughs> Face the pain. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we don't, we didn't deserve him for sure. And he knew it. That's why he left. Mm hmm. And started his. Dance group. <laughs> He's the best. He is. Um, so we've only got to the co I know. What we've a, been talking for a while. We're bear with chatting. us, guys. Sorry, bear with we're us. We're chatting. We're sleepy. We had a rough week. We're finally done with my fight camp. Mine's just starting. Yeah, so it's Yay. it's all all sorts of motors, yeah. <laughs> cycles I had going. Some heavy on. sprints yesterday that I'm still sleepy from. Ah, yeah, but the beach was nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, wait. So what was I doing? Oh, so what else happened on 305? Um, I did not see Gamrot versus Dan Hooker going the way. What a fight, man. I didn't know which version of Hooker was going to show up, but he showed up. He, I, I, I got it. I don't got, think he won, though. We got convict Hooker. You don't think so? I thought the second round was the one in question, and I thought that Gamrot won that round and Hooker finished strong, but I didn't see it as, and I mean, again, I was having some glasses of wine. I could watch it again, but I thought that the body of work that Gamrot did in the second round outweighed hooker finishing strong and then hooker definitely had the third round well i thought that it was a clear two and three for hooker and i'm gonna see what mma decisions thought um it's split straight down the middle Mm. Well, there you go. <laughs> so I'm not crazy. So like, it depends on what you're looking for. Um, <laughs> there's one crazy person score that I was that I was also saying. Uh, one crazy person goes 30, 27 hooker, which I was like, I wouldn't be surprised. That's if so. I'm not. I am not surprised he won in Perth. Yeah, I'm no, not. I'm not surprised he won in Perth. But I was also looking at. The damage, all the damage on Hooker's face happened in the first round. Mm. All the moments of just like all the significant strikes, all of the defended takedowns, like the defended grappling, um, it was on Hooker's side because Gamrot wasn't able to do anything with the takedowns that he got in the second round. Um, he was getting outstruck on the feet, and then in the third, it was all Hooker. Mm -hmm. So that's why I saw two and three Hooker, and then I wasn't sure about the first round because even though uh, Hooker got dropped in the very early part, Hooker dropped uh, Gamera or at least wobbled him to the point where he was on wobbly legs a lot longer than Hooker was in the end of the first round. So that's why I was like, yo, I wouldn't be surprised if it's 30-27 Hooker, but I felt like two and three were super clear. Gamera, like, mauled him for most of the first round, but ended on wobbly legs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so yeah, it split straight down the middle. Um, ben Cartilage gave Hooker one and three. <laughs> what? <laughs> We're not listening Wait to him a ever second. again. So did Mark Christie. And then Mick Meany gave Gamrot uh, one and two, which is the only score I feel like makes sense. But, yeah, everyone gave uh, Gamrot round two to, in, in, to go with what you were saying. And, um, yeah. How do you give him one? 
I don't know. I don't know how you give him one and not two. Yeah. Like right? I, the way I was thinking, I was like, if you're going to give him two, you're definitely going to give him one and three. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's a wild one. I don't know what these guys are just smoking, but yeah. Oh, there was another um, weird split decision that I heard about where the judge actually Tied to Ivasa and Rosenstruck? Fired. <laughs> <laughs> after turning in his... Was it that one? <laughs> yes. Because 3027, Tai Tuivasa, I'm sorry, no. <laughs> 3027. I heard that and I had to rewind it. What? I was like, did I hear that wrong? Uh, Yeah, I was not listening to the audio of the fight, but I was watching it and it was clearly Rosenstruck's fight. Yeah. Like, did he lose a round? No. I didn't think so. <laughs> he did not. He looked amazing. Like, he looked, he looked so good. He looked very, very good. He just looked so sharp and um, really showed his his kickboxing experience. And, and tied to his credit, he's tough as nails, and he never stopped trying and coming forward. He just couldn't get past that that speed and that precision. Yeah, he um, he was trying different stuff. Like, he was throwing calf kicks. For the first time, and then it looked like he hurt himself trying to throw that. He cat did. Head. He hit his foot, Oof. and that's the problem with trying something new like that in a fight. Is that if you're not used to all the years of figuring out how to time it, figuring out like how hard you have to throw when you're finding the range versus how hard you throw when you know when that you it's going it. to be that like, ooh, that's it, yep, yeah. check and mate, bam. <laughs> and that's why those uh, guys that, um, what's, what's that uh, what's that gym called with uh, Gutierrez and um, and uh, uh, what's the name that fought Aldo? Um, Oyama? The, the gym with the tape. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, they always have the tape on on their ankles. That's why they're so good at what they do. They're always hitting the ca- the calf kicks in all of their fights because they just have all those years of reps, all those years of setting up the timing. And Ty was just kind of throwing it because he knew it was there, but it's easy to mess up. Yeah. Like it's a really it's a really dangerous kick to throw as the kicker. And um, Rosenstruck was just on top of his game so yeah uh one person gave charlie keach gave Tai to avasa the first round but it was 29 28 uh howie booth scored 20 30 howie booth is the one that scored 30 27 for Tai to avasa and then david lethaby scored 30 27 for rosenstruck so that is wild i kind of want to see who howie booth is because I've never heard of that I name I mean, we're never going to see him again either. Okay, he scored <laughs> one fight on that card. Keenan versus Glenn. Mm-hmm. Looks like all the rest of his scores. Were there. He, he doesn't do that. Oh, he scored one of my fights. Angel Hill versus Loma Luke Bon Me. Yeah, there's only um, a couple ones where they have it highlighted that he veered off of what everyone else was scoring. One split decision for, oh, Paul Felder defeated Edson Barbosa. Do you remember that one? I remember he ended up in the hospital with him. (laughs) Well, not Barbosa. Felder versus Barboza. Oh, they were in the hospital, right? Yeah. So he scored it for Barboza. Just like most people. So he's he's not like a crappy judge. He's that, not a repeat offender. No. Maybe he just had an off night. Maybe just from his angle, it looked like Ty was doing work. Maybe he mixed up the names. Maybe he was drunk. <laughs> I don't know. I think that happens and people just cover it up. I remember when a uh, referee came out, or not referee, judge came out. Um, I forget which one it was, but a judge came out once and was like, I just, I know that I messed up. And luckily it was a split decision and he didn't affect the fighter's record, mm-hmm. but he came out and said, I messed up. I've, 
put the wrong score. I'm not sure what happened, but blah, blah, blah. And he came out with this whole thing about how he messed up. And it's like, how often does that happen when you do affect someone's record? How often do two judges mess up at the same time and they just don't come out and say anything? Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's just a really uh, annoying thing that you have to deal with, that human error aspect of the fact that we're judged by people and a lot of times they get it wrong. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the fact that he took accountability and spoke out about it. I wish more people did. And I wish more people, I mean, because that just creates an opportunity for you to learn and grow, you know, instead of hiding behind me being right and, you know, doing all of these, all of these like song and dance to, to stay out of the spotlight and not take responsibility and accountability. Yeah, and I can't remember his name, so it's not like it did too much to his career. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But it was not the judge that got fired in Australia. Apparently, he was removed after turning that scorecard. So he was supposed to do the co-main, which he wouldn't have messed up anyway because Kai was... Kai was on top of it. He's yeah. like, don't worry, I He's got like, it, judges. I don't need you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to get involved in this. I got this. Sit down. <laughs> um, were there any other fights on the main that got you just super excited? Uh, Pratis, hello. Yes. He's my favorite. He's amazing. So I don't really remember watching him fight, but I I know I've seen him fight and destroy people multiple times. Yeah. Uh, he's new, though. He's he new to the he's UFC. He's with the fight nerds. And all oh, the fight nerds, of yes. course. Those guys are on top of their game. He just he just dismantled poor guy. Like, he... Um, Man, everything he was throwing was hurting. His boxing was just on another level. He he knows exactly when to throw volume, when to throw power, and when his opponent is cornered. He has He's a great so patient. Yeah, he has a great judgment of just like, okay, now. He dropped Lee three times in the first round mm-hmm. and in, in other rounds as well. Mm-hmm. Um and he just let him get back up. He was like, no, 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 it's not time yet. Yeah. I've been here before. I'm going to get there again. I'm going to hit you where I want to, when I want to, and I'll eventually get you. I just thought it was just so masterful. Mm-hmm. Um, and he just repeatedly does that. Now, I have not seen any of his ground game. <laughs> I don't know what that's going to look like. We don't need to see it. <laughs> <laughs> just make him fight Alex Perea. <laughs> I know. <laughs> But, but man, his striking is just, it's a sight to see. It's beautiful. It is. It is. And um, in welterweight, uh, I feel like we haven't had too many, like, bright stars recently. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I'm trying to think who is up to, like, we haven't seen any new talent, I'm, I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, to have someone like that pop in is really going to spice things up just because he's looked so on form every time he comes out, you know? Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they gave him a big name next. Like, I'm looking at the rankings right now. Um, Kevin Hall and Mike and Venom Page, like, those are two fighters who no one would complain about that matchup. Yeah, I want to see him fight Michael Venom Page. I think yeah. that would be a fun one. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, we have Ian Gary, who's kind of losing his sheen at the moment, too. I think uh, someone like this being inserted into the welterweight rankings would definitely be exciting for the weight class. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a ton of possibilities that we could see him fight. I just don't know. Who? Because he's not he's not ranked in the top 15 yet, is he? No. And I think that I mean, um, you know, uh, Jing. uh, How do you say his name? Jing Li Ling. Li Li Jing Liang. He was ranked at one point. Right. He had a long layoff. Yeah. He he hasn't fought in a bit. Yeah. But it's still a huge name Yeah, to get a knockout over him, to make him look like that after all his experience, all of his tough fights. That's a big deal. So I wouldn't be surprised if he was creeping up, at least 
gonna get a ranked opponent in his next fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was that was really impressive to watch. It's, it's not just his performance, but the level of competition that he had to perform against. Mm-hmm. Because you see people who like uh, Ian Gary who have been kind of nurtured and brought up. They got a lot of gimmies before they actually started getting tested, and then the tests weren't as exciting as the gimmies. And then with Carlos uh, Prats, he's testing he's throwing out exciting fights no matter who it is and he's excelling yes you know that's what that's what the matchmakers love seeing that's what dana loves seeing they love seeing people pass the test Mm -hmm. in an exciting brilliant way and he just repeatedly does it yeah it was beautiful um and i did want to discuss the ladies who are on the card, if you if you caught that one. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, we had Casey, King Casey O'Neill versus Luana Santos. I know I didn't want to talk about it last week, but I was tired. <laughs> 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 and I wanted to talk about your story. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, but um, this is definitely a fight that I was interested in seeing how it played out. And... I do feel bad for Luana Santos because she only had three weeks to prepare. I think she maybe underestimated the beast that Casey O'Neill was coming back from these two losses and being able to just get back in the win column. And, uh, you know, we've we've seen it in the past when Casey O'Neill was coming up. I was just like, who is this girl? She is just getting everyone down, jumping on top of them, beating them up. And uh, she she was having like this kind of uh, Tatiana Suarez kind of a, a, like rise, uh-huh. rise. And when she lost a couple times, and you're like, oh, maybe, maybe that she's not what we thought she was. But in this fight, we saw a little bit of uh, the old Casey O'Neill. Mm-hmm. I think that, um, wait, is it Santos, right? Uh, um, Luana Santos, yeah. So I think Santos, she was coming off of a, of a win, mm-hmm. of a big win, and she had ample amount of time to to adjust. I just think she's still really young in the sport. Mm-hmm. I think she's still like also young physically, mentally, and as a competitor. So I think that Casey O'Neill was able to showcase her her veteranism. Yeah. Um. She also moved to a different gym. Um, she's training. Where does Tracy Cortez train in Arizona? Oh, fight ready. Fight ready. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, she made, she made the adjustment there. Mm -hmm. And so I think we saw like a revamped, revitalized, renewed, uh, Casey O'Neill and Santos. I think, um, she still has a lot of room to grow and learn. Yeah. It just looked like her gas tank wasn't there and you've seen it in the past. I think she's definitely one of those fighters who need a fight camp in order to, look good on the feet as well she's a really good grappler judo girl but she her stand-up it just looks labored and Mm -hmm. in this fight especially uh she just looked tired as soon as that first scramble happened she got up and she was just like one punch one punch you know and casey just looked very composed very uh you know energy efficient and it it's definitely part of her greenness too luana santos just not having control of that energy management but um but also i think because of her weight issues in the past like she had like a thyroid thing or something she definitely shouldn't be jumping on these tasty looking fights just because oh you get that fight real quick get it out of the way it's like I understand the mindset, though, yeah. because there is something to, you know, gaining favor if you do take a short mm-hmm. notice fight. And these, you know, when these opportunities come around, I understand not wanting to pass them up. Mm-hmm. But again, it's it's a learning, growing experience. Maybe she'll know for, for next time that, hey, I'm not a short notice fighter kind of gal. Yeah. And that's okay. But I don't think this loss counts as a strike against her because it was you know, short notice. Oh, for sure. And uh, her only other loss is against our girl, Jenna Bishop. Mm-hmm. So before uh, they both went to their respective uh, places. But um, yeah, she has a lot of, 
a lot of room to make mistakes too. And I was happy to see Casey O'Neill do her thing. And then how good yeah, was her <laughs> celebration? Like <laughs> the national Australian dance now. I know. She hit the ray gun. She <laughs> did. Uh, she hit the the take. The what is it? The movie clapper. Oh, is that what that is? That's what I call it. And then the kangaroo. Yes, yes. And it looked like she wanted to do the Homer system, the Homer Simpson with the finger on the chin, but the camera <laughs> moved. <laughs> so she's like, oh, let me get up. <laughs> it was great. I would have watched a, a two or three minute performance of her doing that as well as her <laughs> fights because awesome. she earned it. She earned it. All right. Well, um, we're going to go to our bonus section right now maybe i'll do a little talking about the fight that i'm about to do next weekend yeah. maybe we can talk about some fights that happened outside of the cage yes oh uh, so many right and uh we had a few fan questions too so we can uh get to those all in our bonus if you're a member you can get it right now if not see you next tuesday